Yeah, I, I, I just want to focus on a couple of issues. Um, the first I start with is um, that we, we, we've had the first motion, motion A, and the amendment to that was a smug amendment. Um, I think this is to some extent a smug amendment. Um, and um, as Councillor March and Daisy has explained, um, you have already an adopted local plan which accepts that um, there needs to be balanced communities. Now, um, and, she's, and Councillor March and Daisy explained it in two ways. Firstly, um, she explained the fact that um, uh, in the new communities, in the developments on the edge of Cambridge, um, there's been very restrictive and focused planning policy to ensure that you have diversity. Um, now, as one of the uh, uh, interesting and uh, uh, insightful contributions that we got before we started um, from the Argyle um, Street Housing Cooperative said, it's critical in uh, right across the city that we have a mixture of ages and a mixture of people. And Councillor Smart lives, as we all do, um, in streets that have changed and evolved, and they are real mixtures. Now, if we have streets that don't have children, the voices of children, if we have streets that don't have older people living in them, we end up with imbalanced streets and communities. And we are not, on this side, um, challenging um, uh, uh, in favour of some form of um, uh, social engineering. Um, uh, we recognise several aspects. Um, there is a free market in housing, and there's very few measures that will actually alter that. Um, we think it, uh, from Councillor Smart has said um, that there's been myths being created. Um, uh, and so the first issue I've, I've attached to is this fact of, well, how is it right for a city council to balance the needs of different age groups and ensure that we do have balanced communities? The second one, and it's a myth that um, maybe Councillor Ward can explain when he makes his contribution, it, uh, various statements are being made that somehow this is going to reduce the amount of private rented accommodation and that somehow that's an issue that um, is going to be addressed by this am amendment. Um, in, in fact, um, it's determined by demand, um, and um, there's no way that um, uh, any intervention is suddenly going to change that. And the myth of that somehow uh, this amendment is somehow going to do better for the supply of um, rented accommodation is a falsehood. Um, the third issue, I mean, just taking um, the way that the Council um, is basically saying everything's okay, don't worry. Um, in the local plan, as Councillor March and Daisy said, there is a specific section which is quite clear uh, that um, uh, the Executive Council of N and planning officers uh, do see the need to look at um, uh, streets that are changing so rapidly. And the as, as Councillor Marshall Daisley said, that there's an issue, uh, Mr Mayor, about whether any trigger is appropriate. It was interesting to hear Councillor Smart start to use the term trigger and tripwire without ever saying what she meant by them. Um, we had an example at East Area Committee last August, and essentially what the planning officer said in the report was, because there's so many um, HMOs already in the Tower Road, which is a road that um, Bromsey councillors will know well, it didn't matter how many more were added. Now, I can, I can point people to the report if they want to see it, but that it essentially lost the issue um, of uh, the value of there being some um, intervention. The, idea that somehow this is suddenly going to be implemented as a policy is a nonsense. Um, Councillor Reid repeated that in declaring her interest. She said, oh, if this motion is passed, uh, my home uh, that I let out um, will suddenly become uh, covered as an HMO. It's a nonsense. The proposal in, uh, that's come from this side is that we ensure that there is a discussion in the very important debate about all sorts of priorities for the city in the summer, um, uh, and that includes uh, this issue as well. 
Um, from your side, as a knee-jerk response, it seems that you seem to be setting yourself against any form of change or review. No extra regulation of HMOs, some of which we know from talking to the residents. If they look bad on the outside, um, talking to the residents, they're worse on the inside. Um, so it's a concern for the residents there. And we, we hope that after you've tried to create some kind of scaremongering during an election, and that after the election is over, whatever shape this chamber takes, that the local plan will address this issue. And we point you to some of the policies of your compatriots in other places like Oxford. And I'll just read out the, uh, as my concluding thought, uh, Mr Mayor, um, the sentiments of the Liberals in Oxford where they say, we will tackle areas where there is good evidence that an excessive number of HMOs are causing problems by refusing to license new HMOs within these areas after consultation with all the households within the area of the proposed ban. And one of the things that that does, as well as support some measure of intervention, is it, it, is it, it actually uh, shows respect for localism. It shows respect for the fact that in reviewing the local plan um, and in tackling the great housing supply issues that we've got, we have to strike a balance um, between the needs of different sectors. Um, we have to ensure that there is more HMOs, that there is more shared housing, but that it is spread better around the city and that, it, that we don't end up with eight or fifteen Natal roads which are just said <coughs> by the planning department to be HMO streets. Um, so you have the opportunity to take a serious look at this issue and perhaps <coughs> after the election you'll join us in doing that.